I am so happy to have all of you here today, and I'm very excited. Thank you for making efforts to come all the way from the US, UK, and also from Thailand. You know, despite this severe flood, thank you for coming, Bachelor-san. And uh, all, all over the world for this very first G1 Global Conference. G1 stands for Group of One, and Globe is One. It's not G20, which is held in France. It's not G7, but it's got to be G1. And this is a concept. This group of one and glo globe is one. I have started G1 Summit in 2008 together with my friends to create, a con to create Davos type community in Japan. The G1 Summit has become the very important community with three ministers have been born, including Fukasa. Thank you for coming. And two self made billionaires and a candidate for a Nobel Award gathering among all the distinguished members. Quite a few of you are here today. Thank you for coming. Whenever we hold a conference in Japan, the language has become an issue. We discussed the idea of holding G1 Summit in English, but by doing so, we may lose some touch. So we have decided to hold a hold G1 Summit in, in Japanese, but this conference we created to make 100% in English. So it, there's no transportation, uh, there's no tra translation, no interpretation, it's 100% in English. So that all of you from the world can join us. And then we named it G1 Global. Japan has suffered the deflation for two decades. The population is declining, and we have huge government debt. Then on March 11th, the earthquake and tsunami hit Japan. I feel that Japan has been tested. Three days after tsunami, we started Kibo project, which means Rainbow of Hope in Japanese, and visited all the devastated areas up in north. There I met a fellow named Hagasan at Otsuchi town in Iwate. Hagasan said to me, so many friends, families, and relatives have died in tsunami. If we do not make this as the moment to change and rebuild the community, we will be laughed at by those who became dead or missing by tsunami. After we saw the scenes of devastation, we felt strongly that we need to commit to rebuild Japan. This, I feel, is a destiny for all of us who still have lives here uh, to live here in Japan. This is why we decided to name the theme of the very first G1 conference as Rebirth of Japan. We need to be reborn and awakened. This is the whole purpose of this conference. For that, for that purpose, we have gathered great speakers and panelists from all around the world. Thank you all for coming. And uh, we have also prepared a sheet of paper so that we can start thinking about what the issues to be raised and what are the questions, and Nick will be the one to be collecting it. As the first keynote speaker, I am proud to present to you Minister of State Motohisa Furukawa. Thank you. He is a very good friend of mine and has participated in G1 Summit from the beginning. He has graduated from Tokyo University and joined Ministry of Finance, and he has been the member of parliament for 15 years, and he is a constant uh, double scorer. I think uh, Furukawa has been uh, the only person who has visited most, quite close to 10 times to Davos. <laughs> And Furukawa-san has been appointed as Minister of State by Prime Minister Noda in September, uh, which position is one of the most important to come up with the strategy and policy of Japan. Without further ado, please join me with round of applause to welcome Minister Furukawa. Thank you very much for a kind in, uh, introduction. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you, especially Horisan, for giving me the opportunity to express my thoughts and vision 
on the efforts for the rebirth of Japan at the G1 Global 2011 Rebirth of Japan after the earthquake. The theme of today's conference is Rebirth of Japan after the earthquake. I don't think that to be reborn simply means to be back to the original that it used to be. Rather, it means to go up to a new height by creating a more resilient society in the process of recovery and to lead the world in this regard. I believe that a truly meaningful rebirth will be achieved only when we could reach that stage. Based on this standpoint, I'm determined to do my utmost towards the rebirth of Japan. In other words, in the process of, re of reconstruction and rebirth from the disasters, we would like to create a new economic and social structure which Japan is aiming for and that the world will follow as a new model in the future. In addition to that, we, we would also like to pursue realizing such economic and social models in those areas damaged by the disasters as pioneers and to demonstrate them to the world. This is a message I would like to deliver to you today. Japan was struck by unprecedented disasters on March 11 this year. Recovery and reconstruction, as well as the res resolution of the nuclear accident, are the issues that the Noda administration must give the highest priority. However, they are certainly not the only problems that Japan faces. Japan has been facing many economic and social challenges even before the earthquake. You can easily point out examples of such challenges that have existed before the disasters. Energy and environmental problems, the aging society, fiscal deficit, and a long-lasting economic slump and deflation following the collapse of the bubble economy, as well as the declining presence of Japan in the international community, owing partly to the aforementioned difficulties, to name a few. What hit Japan in addition to those challenges were the Great East Japan earthquake and the nuclear accident at the power plant in Fukushima Prefecture in March. Therefore, as Prime Minister Noda correctly pointed out in his policy speech to the Diet, Japan is now in the midst of the national crisis. This is a serious challenge to us, but it is by no means insurmountable. I think that any crisis offers a chance to us at the same time. Looking back, Japan has faced a lot of challenges in its history, such as natural disasters, pollution, and oil crisis. Each time Japan faced such challenges, Japan always developed technologies and innovative measures to overcome them and created a more advanced economic and social structure. Therefore, in view of the resilient steps forward and tireless efforts made by our predecessors in the past, we, the present generation, should bear the responsibility to squarely confront this national crisis unflinchingly to overcome various challenges we face by gathering wisdom and knowledge from within and outside Japan and to pass a more resilient nation to our next generation. If you look at the situation carefully, you will notice that most challenges that Japan faces today are those that many other countries now face 
or will face in the future. In that sense, Japan is a frontrunner for addressing emerging problem problems in the world. Japan stands at the front line of various issues faced by the world. Therefore, as the first country in the world to face and tackle them, Japan must work out solution models on its own. To overcome such difficulties does not only mean save Japan, but to save the world which faces similar challenges. I am determined with this awareness and resolved in my mind to tackle this national crisis. It was under such a circumstances that the Democratic Party of Japan took over the power from the Liberal Democratic Party after its half-century governance. Since then, the DPJ government has been making its utmost to deal with those challenges that Japan has been facing before the earthquake. One of the highest priority issues that the DPJ government must address to revitalize Japan is to rouse Japan from its long-term economic sluggishness. Japan's economic revival is directly connected to the recovery of the world economy. Unless the Japanese economy revives, there will not be a true recovery in the disaster-affected areas. From this perspective, the DPJ government launched the new growth strategy last year which set forth the strategies to revive Japan as a vigorous country. I myself have led the government's efforts to develop this strategy. Its main points are that, as a world frontrunner in terms of energy and environmental problems, and the problem of an aging society, Japan will achieve new growth between green innovation and life innovation, and create the world number one advanced environment and energy society, and the world number one healthy longevity society. Moreover, Japan will show these societies to the rest of the world as a new model for growth. First, I would like to talk about green innovation. Energy and environmental problems, such as high fossil fuel prices and global warming, are serious issues for Japan, which has to depend on other countries for much of its energy resources. Yet, this is why Japan has developed the world's most advanced energy conservation technology and environmental technology. Learning from these past experiences, I would like to make sure that Japan will accelerate green innovation through technical innovation and regulatory and system reforms and achieve world's number one advanced environment and energy society. Next, on life innovation. At 23%, Japan has the highest percentage of elderly people of any country in the world. An aging society tends to be seen as negative, but we should remind ourselves of the fact that it is something that can only occur when the longevity that humanity has long sought has been achieved. In other words, we should be proud that we live in a longevity society. The important thing is not just to live a long life, but to make the society where people can live a longer life in a healthier condition. To this end, I would like to promote life innovation centered on medical and nursing care and to create a new model in which life innovation generates new industries and new employment to maintain and promote a vibrant economy, even in an aging society. From a medium to longer term perspective, we cannot avoid the issue of fiscal health, 
as we hold huge fiscal deficit. Therefore, the government developed the fiscal management strategy last year to identify the roadmap toward mid to long term fiscal consolidation. At the same time, in parallel with this, we are currently undertaking a comprehensive reform of social security and tax in order to maintain and enhance a social foundation on which people can live their lives at ease. It was during this period that the Great East Japan earthquake occurred. It brought to us further challenges, such as recovery and reconstruction from the disasters, as well as the resolution of the nuclear accident on top of those we have faced before the earthquake, as I just mentioned before. The government will continue steadily and surely implementing concrete measures one by one in accordance with the basic guidelines for reconstruction set forth in July. Such measures include quickly passing the third supplemental budget, introducing the system of special zones for reconstruction, and implementing special measures on deregulation, deregulation and system reforms based on the idea of reconstruction open to the world, we will actively work to bring in this effort the vi vitality of other countries as well. For example, we have decided to implement tax measures, including an effective five-year exemption from corporate tax for companies, including foreign companies, which newly established in a certain industry agglomeration district in the special zone for re reconstruction. We hope that foreign companies will actively participate in such initiatives for recovery and reconstruction. In addition, in light of the nuclear accident, there is concern that there will be pressure on electricity supply and demand, as well as on the increase in power cost. Electricity is the essential lifeblood of economic activity. Stable and low cost supply is very important. Therefore, we have decided to review our energy policy from scratch and just issued the action plans on the stabilization of short term energy supply demand in order to pursue reducing the dependency on nuclear as our energy sources and to promote advanced models on energy conservation and renewable energy in the world, we are currently working on an innovative strategy for energy and the environment for the medium and long term, which is expected to be launched next summer. Today, the rapid yen appreciation and the world economy lacking in resilience are inviting a downturn in the Japanese economy and the hollowing out of its industries. In order to address these risks, the comprehensive countermeasures against the yen appreciation was recently announced. They include not only defensive measures, to mitigate the negative impact of the end ap appreciation, but also offensive measures to build a robust economic structure by providing, among others, improved location subsidy and support for corporate activities that utilize the advantage of the strong end. We should take advantage of this opportunity to evolve Japanese economic structure to a more advanced one that is resilient to various risks. In this context, foreign companies are eligible for this location subsidy if they meet the, the criteria. So I hope we will see active participation from overseas. There are still continued concerns on sovereign risks in Europe, which in turn increased the importance of fiscal consolidation. 
In light of this, Japan will address the issue of fiscal consolidation in parallel with the implementation of the new growth strategy and the countermeasures against a strong end, and is aiming for achieving the targets based on the fiscal management strategy launched last year. In implementing these measures, which we plan to take in order to revitalize Japan based on the new growth strategy and other strategies through various initiatives I just mentioned, I would like to front load some or prioritize, prioritize others intensively in the disaster, uh, disaster affected areas. And then I want to make these areas as a model for pioneering the new forms of economy and society that Japan envisions. Efforts have already been started. For example, in the field of green innovation, we are preparing for the development of research sites on renewable energy, such as the testing of the most advanced solar power generation and smart community project in Fukushima Prefecture. In the field of life innovation, the Tohoku Medical Megabank project <coughs> is to be carried out to build a database on medical and pharmaceutical information and to conduct experimental study to establish genome therapy and other leading edge treatments. I would like to continue such efforts by putting focus on and prioritizing Tohoku through, among others, a future city in initiative, which incorporates economic interests, environmental conservation, and social aspects, as well as the introduction of a new so social security system that utilizes the numbering to promote the networking within the community. The Noda administration has recently established the Council on National Strategy and Policy as a headquarters to discuss these critical issues and to indicate the future direction. This council will develop a basic strategy to revitalize Japan, centered on what I just mentioned, and is expected to finalize a strategy to revitalize Japan, which will concretize the basic strategy in detail and show the roadmap in the middle of next year. I would like to achieve the reconstruction of the affected areas through its implementation. Further, in this process, I would also like to realize new economic and social models which Japan is aiming for in the Tohoku region as pioneers and to demonstrate them to the world. In this context, we should take note of the fact that, that the growth we envisage should be inclusive and dynamic, leaving no one behind and ensuring peace and security of the community. Bearing this in my mind, I would like to realize the rebirth of Japan. The priori primary responsibility for this reconstruction and revitalization effort lies in the government. The government should take the lead. As a member of NODA cabinet, I myself am committed to doing my utmost. At the same time, this will not be achieved without the cooperation and participation of all we present here as well as many people outside Japan. Together, I hope that we will be able to create a model in Japan as a stage for the world to overcome various difficulties it faces and to work hand in hand to contribute to the solution of the world challenges. Finally, I would like to conclude my speech by asking for all of your assistance towards this end. Thank you for your kind attention. <laughs>